So, uh, you know, just recently, we're here in the uh, end of 2012, and there's a couple key things in the news, the, uh, you know, the fiscal cliff. Uh, of course, health care reform is a big thing, and that's going to be a big uh, impact to small and medium businesses and to tax, yeah. tax work. So when you look at those types of things, and I mean these types of changes happen all the time, mm -hmm. how do you approach that with clients? How do you approach them? Uh, is it, you know, we got to change everything for this? Or, you know, what do you do with these types of things, especially when they're big like these two? Right. Well, again, what we don't want to do is have tax law dictate everything that our clients are doing. Right. Uh, we have to approach it very, if you want to use fiscally responsible, uh, which is a difficult term, I think, at times. Can we for, use that with government? I'm not so <laughs> sure. That's why I hesitated. <laughs> right, okay. All right, We're going right. to do our best to be fiscally okay, responsible, sorry, regardless of what happens in Washington. Um, so we, we, we try, to, try to meld those things together to, okay. to come up with, a, with really a plan. And, and this has been a challenging time. Um, the inevitable is that we're all going to pay tax at some point, in some fashion. Right. We're just trying to figure out how much. Okay. And then control that to a certain extent the best we can. And this has been a challenge. Um, I wish I could tell you that that crystal ball said that everybody was going to figure this out over the, next, <laughs> <laughs> over the next couple of weeks and make a decision. And I'm not so sure we're there. I know that there's still a tremendous amount of debate to be done and a lot of work uh, in Congress to figure it out. So how do we approach that? Um, if we assume the inevitable or assume a worst case scenario, then, then all of Bush tax cuts and credits that were done 10 to 12 years ago are going to expire December 31st. And there's a handful of ramifications that come along yeah. with that. Um, and, I, and I think one of those, right, is in the so they, they reduce the amount of Social Security that everybody pays, right, from the employee perspective. Right, that's correct. And those go away. So, I mean, you know, just individuals on their paycheck could see fifty, hundred dollars difference. Yeah, you're going to see a two percent deduction. It's going to be going to Social Security. Right, a two percent increase in Social Security or a two percent right. deduction on your net pay. That will be painfully obvious the first paycheck. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's one of the big ones. Uh, I know that as of last week, they were still trying to figure out if they were going to leave that end or at least try to extend it right. because that is that's a major impact immediately yeah. on everyone in the that country. everyone sees. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> uh, so that's one of the big ones. Um, it is the, the, the most difficult thing is to get a grasp on what's going to happen to the income tax brackets Yeah, well, and, and that, how that's going to be affected. And that was one of the things I was going to ask you is sometimes just the uncertainty. Yeah. Right, just the uncertainty of not really knowing whether it's going to change or not, right. or if they're going to make a decision, kind of, kind of ties you up a little bit right. in what you can advise. Yeah, one of the things that that I have advised over the last month or so has been uh, my assumption so far is that something's going to happen with capital gains. Okay, that that's a sticky issue with both sides of the aisle in in Washington. Uh, Republicans wanting to continue to keep that low, they've assume that it fosters investment, the Democrats right. wanting to increase that tax because they assume that it's only rich people get to take, take advantage right. of that. And, and so, what kind of, like how for a small medium business owner, how will the capital gains most significantly affect them? Where well, will you see that? I mean, because that's when you have something and then you sell it, kind of an right. investment type thing. Right. How do you uh, see that? Well, here's, most? here's something that, you know, maybe you're a small business real estate owner. Okay. And we're allowed to take and do a like-kind exchange and sell one property for another. It's a great way to defer tax. Maybe you want to consider not doing that. Maybe you want to consider selling an appreciated asset that we're going to get capital gains treatment on in this current year. Because my assumption is that the capital gains tax is going to go up in right. some fashion. Right. And it could go from right now there are people that are paying zero because they're income tax brackets, uh, the lowest rate right now is 10%, though. Right. That could, we could see 20 to 25% on capital gains, uh, depending upon what Congress does. So one of the things that I have been encouraging is if there is a piece of real estate that you're considering selling it anyway, uh, the time is short. It's December right. the 21st. <laughs> if you've got a buyer and you're trying to make that decision, I would, I would highly recommend or, or at least think through or talk to your tax advisor about that possibility. Obviously, there's a lot of other factors that may go into whether or not that's the right decision. 
Uh, but that's something that could be done really quickly. Okay. And it's a, it's a fast tax savings if those capital gains rates do go up. Yeah, and another impact of that is uh, I was talking to somebody earlier this week who is in a position to sell his business yeah. and to do an asset sale on his business, right. which, you know, and getting that done by the end of the year right. became a little bit of a motivation because Absolutely. of the probability right. that capital gains would go up. Right, that, and that was a great, great uh, recommendation. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> was my, he was just telling me that, that that's what he had recommended. Yeah, that, that was, was good. good. So that's a good decision, but the capital gains is something... Yeah, well. capital gains rates for businesses. Um, I think uh, most people are going to feel this on an individual basis. Uh, in a C corporation, the, the tax brackets could change as well. But when you're talking about a pass-through entity, right. even from a business standpoint, that's flowing directly to you as an individual. Right. And whether or not we see a, a huge change in the corporate structure or the business structure from a tax standpoint, if you're a pass-through entity, this is going to affect you immediately. Right. So uh, just real quick on health care reform, what do you see? I know that that kind of factors in over the next few years. What's right. the big impact of health care reform for 2013 for small and medium business? Well, for small and medium business, you're going to see some decision that's going to have to be made on whether or not you're going to pick your employees up okay. in, in, in health care and, and who you're going to cover and how you're going to cover. Uh, that was a big document that they passed. Yes. Over a thousand pages. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not sure There's they all there. read it. <laughs> um, we're still trying to figure a lot of it out. Okay. And uh, we actually don't do our own business, uh, our own uh, benefits coordinating. We actually hire out for <laughs> even an accounting firm. Right. Uh, because there is such complication in what's going on. And we're leaning on the professionals in the healthcare industry to help us out. Right. Um, my recommendation on that is if you've got somebody that you're working with to coordinate with them to figure out what the impact is going to be which employees you're going to have to cover um, some of our some of our larger businesses are actually struggling with whether or not they're going to retain long-time employees people who have been there 10 15 20 years because of the impact of what's going to happen to bring everyone in to the fold as far as health care is concerned and uh, it the economic impact on on the cl on on business is going to right. be big. The economic impact to the society, in my opinion, is going to be large. Uh, and there's just a lot. There's still a lot of uncertainty. Yeah, I I see that as well. And you know what? What's a little bit scary, just to kind of close this out, is that you started out by saying, "Don't let your tax decisions, you know, don't let that wag the dog, right? right. Don't don't make bad business decisions just to to get some right. savings on taxes and." One of my concerns is that people are going to be making, like you say, uh, you know, making em employment decisions yeah. on whether to retain people or not based on the health care aspect. I don't think that's what was meant to happen, but yeah. <clears throat> somewhere in that document, it's kind of it maybe forcing some decisions like that. So definitely get a hold of, uh, uh, you know, your accountants, your health care professionals, right. your insurance agents, and really figure out what the best path is for, uh, for health care yeah, reform as you're going forward as a small business over the next couple of years. Yeah. One right. of the other things that's immediate impact as well is, is going to be on the individual side, which is uh, an increase in what they're calling an extra Medicare tax. Right. Which okay. is going to add 3.8% uh, for individuals or couples who make uh, in excess of $250,000. And there'll also be another 0.9% uh, uh, yeah, surcharge uh, for a Social Security type of tax on wages in excess of Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So the impact is going to be big. Yeah, right. and it's going to be immediate. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, we've talked a lot about taxes, but why don't you just take a, a minute and tell us about uh, Badger Summerall and Company? Uh, Badger Summerall and Company is a full-service accounting firm. We have offices in Marshall, Virginia, and also in Vienna. Uh, my partner Dick Badger manages our practice in Vienna, and I manage the practice in Marshall. Uh, we provide soup to nuts of tax planning, uh, tax returns for small, medium-sized businesses as well as individuals. We do audit work, uh, financial planning, and consulting as well. Great. And I've always loved talking to you because it's not just about the accounting and taxes. You take in, you know, you think about the marketing and the yeah. operations and things like that. So I've enjoyed yeah, working do. with you on that. Yeah, it's been fun. Cool. It's been very good. Thank you. Great. Well, Sean, thanks for joining us. And uh, thank you for joining us here on Be Better at Business TV. I'm the host, Jamie Gorman. And I own Sigma Business Management, and we help businesses be better at business. We do that through planning, through education, 
and through meeting facilitation. Thanks again for joining us, and please share this with somebody uh, if you found it helpful. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate Thank you, you being, letting me be here. You're welcome. Great.